I'm Steve for This With Cars, and today I'm working on the 1969 Riley Elf. This car last had its V5 registration in 1992, and I think it's been in the United States ever since. The Riley Elf is very rare here in the United States, as is the Woosley Hornet, and the Riley Elfs were never sold here originally. Right now you can see the car sitting very low, in fact it's tilting to one side. That's because this car does have the hydroelastic suspension and I need to pump it up. But I'm going to do some work on the front wheels first and I may actually put different wheels all around. So I'm going to pump up the car later after this work is done. I'm going to give this car a little bit of a Cooper treatment and install disc brakes on the front. And because those brakes are larger in diameter than the original drum brakes, I may have to switch to a larger wheel to accompany them. Here's the new parts that I ordered. We have little rotors. These are seven and a half inch rotors. Of course, new calipers to go along with it. We have to change the drive flange. We have brake pads, new hubs, new wheel bearings, CV joints, ball joints, miscellaneous bits, and of course, brake hoses. As you can see, switching a mini from drum brakes to disc brakes isn't a small job. And I still need to get all the old bits off first. Here's the little drum brakes that I'm going to be replacing. Now I need to remove the brake hose, and when I do the lower and upper ball joints, everything can slide out that way. little bit of action from the pickle fork, pop that down. Well, there went the bottom one. go all this can come out as one unit i could have left the brake drum on if i wanted to but i just like to have a better view of everything i have all the parts for one side sorted out now and i can assemble most of this together and then put it on the car and then add the caliper and the brake hose and i should be good i need to put the bearings into the hub the bearings are the same, inner and outer, but the seals on the inner and outer are different. There's a seal that goes on the inside and it's got this little lip that has a little water shield that's going to clip onto that. So you need to make sure that you get that on the inside of the hub. And there's also this little spacer that goes between the inner and outer bearings. So make sure that you put that in before you actually put your bearing into the race. You're going to need something to press that race in and it needs to be a smaller diameter than the race itself that way it doesn't get stuck in the hub i have this drawer of miscellaneous metal pieces that i use for using with the press i found a couple things that i'm going to use i'm going to drive it in with this thick steel pipe and this is going to be my adapter for the top of that because i need a little bit smaller diameter to match up with the head on the press you can see that's all the way down now to get the other side started just going to do the same process and i'll just push that into there just to get that nice and started 
Now I can press it in the rest of the way. There we go, both races are installed. Now I can pack the bearings and then we'll come back and press the seals in. I'm going to pack the bearings by using a bearing packer, which makes this a very easy job to do. There's some holes down on the bottom of this piston that's gonna move down. That's going to force grease up through there. So we just drop our bearing in and we'll actually force the grease up through the bearing, completely packing the bearing full of grease. Now we just push this down. It takes quite a bit of force, but you can see the grease is starting to pop out through the top of the bearing. Just take a bit of this, make sure the rollers are nice and coated. I can drop it into the hub. I'm going to put the bearings in now and then put the seals in. The seal that goes on the inside has this ridge for this water seal here. And the other side is just plain. So make sure that you get those in the correct spots. I'm going to do the inside one first. Put the seal in there. Before you put your bearing in this side, remember that you need to put the bearing spacer in. The grease should hold it in place. And you can drop in your other bearing. And then press the seal on. The bearings and seals are done. You can see the spacer in between the bearings in there. Now I need to assemble the upper and lower swivel balls. And when you go to install your lower one, make sure that you put the spring in the lower one. Otherwise, the, they're the same. And this kit came with a bunch of shims. And the way you figure these out is go ahead and install this without the lock washer, which is this thing, or any of the shims. You uh, tighten this down all the way and then measure the distance here between the top of the hub and the bottom of the nut. And that will tell you how many shims that you need to use when you reinstall this. You can see that's not gonna close all the way. So I'm going to grab a wrench and tighten this up and then you'll measure that. And then you'll know how many shims you'll have to put in there. Once you get the measurement of the gap, just subtract 030 inches from that and then stack up your shims to come as close to that measurement as you can. Got it assembled. I ended up using one of the shims on the top and four of the shims on the bottom. Now I need to install the spline drive to the rotor. So it's a matter of lining up the studs, pushing this on, and then these screws go into the chamfered holes. And it will be screwed into these holes right here. There's that assembled. And of course, this is going to go through the center of it. But before you tighten up the nut, tightening this on there, make sure that you put this little piece in there to give the nut a nice flat surface to tighten down on. Now it's time to start working on replacing the CV joint. And I'm going to undo this boot so that I can pull this whole assembly out and work on it on the bench. This car still has the old style of band clamps on it, which can just be unfolded and removed. This old style is actually reusable if you wanted to reuse these, but new clamps came with the kit. I've now slid the boot up enough so that I could put it into the vise. Then I'm going to use a slide hammer to pull this out. This can be pretty hard to pull out because of that spring clip in there. So I find it easiest just to put a slide hammer on it and pull it out.
And there we go. You may not understand what was holding this on, but inside of here is a little spring clip and it will make more sense when I put the new one on. I'm going to let this sit in the parts washer for a little bit, get it all cleaned up before I put it back together. Before I put this back together, let's talk about why I'm even changing this. As you can see, the spline drive is different. This is a larger diameter than this one. This one is also much longer. So that's why we needed to take this apart so that we could put this new CV joint on there. If we look at the end of this, this is the spring clip that was holding the CV joint in. This clip keeps this from going in anymore. And then once we push this in there, this clip will keep it from coming back out. Before I put the two of these together, you need to remember to put your boot on. So I'm going to slide this over everything, get it pushed out of the way, and then we'll put the two together. Going to pull the old spring clip out. Slide the new one on. Going to set that in there. Try to get that spring pushed in the best I can. And then give it a bump. There we go. It's all the way down. You can see it is now against the other clip and it will not come apart. Now I can grease the CV joint, slide the boot over, and put the new clamps on. With everything now set the way I want it to be, I need to bend the little lock tabs down. That'll keep these from undoing. I also need to move the steering arm from the old brakes, put it on here, and set the lock tabs on that as well. Now everything's locked and ready to go back on. Everything is roughly installed. I need to torque everything up. I will need to put my split pin on the castle nut there, but I'll have to go back, tighten everything up properly. I'll bleed the brakes. Uh, let's throw the wheel on real quick, see if it will even clear the caliper. Looks like the original wheels will fit on the brakes, so we can maintain our classic look with this car. Looks like we sprung a leak up here in the front suspension. And with that bombshell completely unrelated to the brake job, this is the end of the video. But if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.